Hello, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on Common Network Vulnerabilities. Today we're going to be discussing vulnerabilities associated with unsecure protocols, and we're going to conclude with vulnerable network practices. There's a fair amount of ground to cover, so let's jump into this session. I will begin by discussing vulnerabilities associated with unsecure protocols. Network security is never a completely done deal. It often seems as if as soon as one hole is plugged, another one opens up. Vulnerabilities are discovered all the time, making it difficult for network administrators to keep up. While this is true, there are still some steps that administrators should take to reduce the vulnerabilities that exist in the systems under their control. By reducing known vulnerabilities, administrators can then spend their time preparing for and reducing exposure to up-and-coming threats, thus increasing their productivity. The first vulnerable protocol that we're going to discuss is Telnet. Telnet is a protocol that is used to create a virtual terminal connection that is commonly used for troubleshooting. Telnet is very unsecure because all communication occurs in clear text. Telnet does not support encryption. Whenever possible, Secure Shell or SSH should be used to create those virtual terminal connections in place of Telnet. Then there is SNMP, Simple Network Management Protocol, versions 1 and 2. SNMP is a protocol that is used to remotely manage and configure network devices. Due to their lack of encryption support, versions 1 and 2 are unsecure and susceptible to packet sniffers. This can allow an attacker to grab those packets and actually gain control of the configuration and management of your network devices. If you're going to use SNMP, version 3 should always be used as it supports more security including encryption. FTP, or File Transfer Protocol, is a protocol that is used to transfer files across a network connection. While a username and password are required in most cases to use FTP, it doesn't support encryption, which creates a vulnerability in the process. Because of this lack of encryption support, everything is done in the clear, making it susceptible to being captured and you could lose sensitive information. Secure FTP or SFTP should be used in place of FTP as it creates an SSH FTP session. TFTP or Trivial File Transfer Protocol is a simple stripped down version of FTP that doesn't support authentication like standard FTP so it's even more unsecure. It is commonly used to download and upload configuration files for networking equipment. TFTP should only be used when a connection to networking equipment is made through the console port, thus eliminating the possibility of eavesdropping. And that console port should have its own security measures in place. Everyone's fairly familiar with HTTP, or Hypertext Transfer Protocol, it's the protocol that is used to send and receive data over the internet. It is unsecure in its basic format and susceptible to being intercepted due to its lack of encryption. HTTPS or HTTP Secure should be used when conducting sensitive business over the internet as it will provide encryption and other security services. Hopefully your network still doesn't use serial line IP or SLIP. It is an early protocol that was developed for communicating over serial ports and modem connections that required a static IP address. It is very outdated and very unsecure. SLIP does not support encryption. Hopefully you will be using point-to-point -point protocol in its place. PPP does support encryption and is much more secure. Now it's time to talk about vulnerable network practices. First up are unpatched or legacy systems. Unpatched systems are by their very nature unsecure. 
Keeping all operating systems and applications up to date will reduce vulnerabilities in the network and it helps to harden that network against attack. In some situations, it is necessary to keep legacy systems alive. This can create vulnerabilities in the system as weaknesses in these legacy systems tend to be well known. Special security measures should be taken with legacy systems in order to reduce the opportunity for exploitation. One of the best security steps that you can take is placing these legacy applications or systems on their own network or on their own virtual local area networks. Then there are open ports and an open port can either be physical or it can be an application port. These open ports create a hole in the security of the network and may be exploited. While not all open ports can or should be closed, security should be placed on these ports that need to remain open to reduce the vulnerability of the network. A good practice is to use a port scanner periodically to verify that only absolutely required application ports are open. Another thing to remember is that you should only use a port scanner if you are authorized to scan that network, or you may end up in a rather lengthy discussion with your security personnel. Unnecessary running services are another vulnerable network practice. Operating system services are used to perform some functions within the system, but it is possible for them to be exploited. A periodic review of all running services should be conducted on all equipment that is attached to the network. All unnecessary running services should be disabled to harden your network. Clear text credentials are another vulnerability that's rather common. Many applications and devices require the use of credentials in order to be used. In some cases, these credentials are sent in clear text format which makes them easier to read when captured. A good practice is to periodically review all applications and systems to determine which ones use clear text credentials. Then you need to either limit their use or figure out how to encrypt the transmissions to secure your system. Unencrypted communication channels are another problem. Any method of communication on the network that is not encrypted is an unencrypted channel that is subject to being breached. While not all communication channels need to be encrypted, a good practice is to review all channels and make a decision about which ones need to be encrypted and which ones do not. All wireless network channels should be encrypted. There are no exceptions. Do not create an unencrypted wireless network. That's just asking for problems. A vulnerability that few network administrators think about are RF or radio frequency emanations. One method of intercepting communication is to analyze signal leakage. That's the RF emanation. Many forms of communication are subject to these signal emanations, but there are steps that can be taken to reduce them. Tempest is a set of standards established by the NSA and NATO that outline steps that can be used to reduce the opportunity for the interception and analysis of communication. That concludes this session on common network vulnerabilities. I began with vulnerabilities associated with unsecure protocols. I then concluded with vulnerable network practices. On behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session and I look forward to doing another one.